Right, good evening guys. Um, as you can see, I'm just busy editing another video there quickly. And the main reason for doing this video is I've actually had quite a few questions with regards to the U. So they're mostly relating to where have I put things, what other things am I thinking about adding, and what do I currently have on it. So that's mostly things like water tanks, batteries, solar panels, inverters, um, and any of those other sort of additives that I have actually added to the U. Now, I've tried to do it in different sections where I've gone right the way around, inside, outside, and everything. So feel free to have a bit of a skip around if you're only interested in the electronics or where the tanks go or like what my camping setup is and so on as well. Now, most of what I've done is sort of relatively at a cost standpoint. So uh, pretty much all of it is custom built by myself. Um, I naturally bought things like the canopy, but all the fit out on the inside, the drawer systems, um, my drop down fridge slide and where I've put things, a lot of the brackets, pretty much all of my electronics, all of that stuff I have done myself. Now eventually I might actually do a couple of tutorials if people are actually interested in that. So do let me know in the comments if there's anything you guys want me to do and I can potentially try and put that together. And more so is I can't afford a lot of the high-end products like the Red Arcs and things like that for a lot of my electronics. So I have gone with the best I sort of can and a large portion of what I'm using is actually sourced off places like eBay. So if there's anything that does catch your eye, have a look in the description. I'll try and link as much as I can for you guys to try and help you out a little bit there as well. But um, yeah, let me know in the comments. just to start things off. Um, as most of you guys will probably be familiar, I've just got the VRS single loop little bar. Now, I did choose this one over the three loop, almost 100% just purely for aesthetic reasons. The three loop is probably a bit more practical. It is heavier, but it is a bit more practical in the sense that you do get the headlight protection, as well as being able to actually add some brush bars to that one as well, which you, you could do with this one, but you probably have to fabricate those a little bit yourself. Now, Apart from that, I have got the GME 6.6 dB, I believe, um, antenna at the front, and that runs an XRS GME unit inside, which you'll see in a, bit, in a bit. Now, I have also added the GME FM antenna, and that's actually made a huge difference to this ute and the radio reception that I get. So pretty much almost any campsite that we pull into or anything like that, I've still got FM reception when most other people don't. Um, to the point of, I have got a second radio that sits inside the canopy at the back and that's also got its own dedicated antenna actually sitting at the back of the ute and that also helps for when we've got in the camp set up, I can just turn that radio on and I've got reception right there. Now, apart from that, I have got the Ridge Rider 12,000 pound winch that's just simply connected at the front. These are winch compatible um, bull bars. Now, I have mounted the control box up the top here. And the reason for that is if you've ever been nose first in a mud hole trying to get yourself back out and you're having to try and fish inside here to get to the connection port then um yeah you'll learn to appreciate the usefulness of having it higher up at this point on the front of the car the only other things i've really changed I've got a bit of rubber stripping i literally had that laying around the house it was dropped off something else that i had left over and that's just shoved on there it can fall off at any minute now but um, I might put it on permanently. I'm still deciding if I actually like the look of it or not. I've added the two little air vents on the top. They are literally, I think, about $10 of eBay. Um, I'll try and put a link in the bottom for most of the stuff that I've sort of used for anyone who is interested in any other things. Now, I have changed the tires on these as well. These are 265-7017 Nitto Terra Grabbers. So far, I'm actually fairly impressed with them. Um, they're a bit more aggressive than your general all terrains, um, going a bit towards the mud. But on the road, they've actually been really quiet so far. Anything above 60 k's an hour, wind noise is more than the tire noise. I can't hear them anymore. Um, and they're sitting on King's, I believe, 8 inch uh, just steel rims. Now, I had the option of obviously going for alloy wheels with those ones. Um, but actually decided against it, simply because if you do go do a bit of off-roading and things like that, uh, steel rims can bend, but you can fix that sort of um, in certain situations on the track side. Whereas an aluminium one will crack and you can't actually use it anymore. But apart from that, simply cosmetically, 
aluminium ones, you scrub them up a couple of times on rocks while you're out and it sort of loses most of its value. Now, you might also be able to tell the ute is sitting on a two inch lift and that is the rock shocks ones installed by the dealership. I believe Adco support those ones as well. Um, and I have got the 500 kilo plus system in that one. So that with the bull bar and winch compact um, companion as well. So for my setup and my weight distribution and everything else, I'm actually pretty, pretty impressed with those. I do get pretty decent flex out of them. Um, I do get pretty much right up to the arches and everything. Um, I've got quite a good bit of drop in the back and traveling gravel roads and things like that, it does actually ride really comfortably when I'm loaded up for that setup. All right, if we have a quick look inside here, now before we jump too far, um, this is where my little Wi-Fi dongle sits. And that's just got a permanent power connection there as well as a antenna connection. Now that antenna lives just behind the cab actually, that just lives up here. And that just gives me a bit of extra range when it comes to the actual reception. Apart from that, we've got a quick little switch here and that runs up to a heads up display, which sits up here. And that displays speed, revs, battery voltage, um, and the time for me. It's mostly what I use it for. Um, I have got a dual battery monitor that I have connected up here. And that tells me what my main battery and auxiliary battery charges are, as well as a two USB point plug sitting right here. And that runs off my auxiliary battery. So that's really handy for when we pull into camp or when I'm at work or something like that. That means that I can just chuck something on charge and not have to worry about... Um, getting the ignition started or anything like that. Ugh. Jump in, we've got a, just a dash cam sitting up there. On the left hand side just here, now we have got an inclometer and a pitch meter here. And the main reason I end up using that one is for when we are pulling into camp because I have the rooftop tent. So I can actually use that to just quickly and easily be able to tell if the ute's actually sitting level or not. Um, just a little compass underneath that, that's just for no reason at all. Now we have got the GME XRS um, CB radio system sitting just here and that's actually to be fair I'm really happy with this unit so far. Uh, the main unit sits just underneath the dash that just hangs up there really nice and easy to clip I've never missed the clip which is quite surprising and I think that's mostly what we've done. We've moving around to the side now uh, one of the first things some of you might notice is I have got custom side steps on this one. Now that was actually made by another member of the LDV community. Um, I'm not going to mention him because I don't think he's making those anymore, unfortunately for you guys. But I managed to get score one off him. Um, so far, so good. They've really they've helped my clearance. I've come down on them a few times, and they've definitely saved my doors. And the side steps would have the factory ones would have been destroyed by now. I've actually just resprayed them in the last couple of days as well because of where they have actually had impact and protected the car. Now on top of that, um, I've just got a normal plastic dip and that's on the door handles and on the wing mirrors. And I sprayed those on the car. And the reason for that was just to see if I actually like the look and if it's something that I do want to stick with. I think I do and eventually I will peel that back off again, actually give them a quick bit of a sanding and respray them. I might still do it on the car once again. I simply just protect the whole thing with plastic, like it's like a $3 sheet from Bunnings and then just tape up around everything else that you need and I just spray them right there. It's just because it's a U and I can't be that bothered. Um, snorkel wise, I think it is one of the ugliest snorkels out there and that is the Atco supplied airflow one. Uh, the only reason I actually ended up going with that one is I had a last minute trip plan and I needed one for the very next day for a water crossing. Um, and the TJM ones, I think it was about a three week wait to get those. Whereas this one, my local dealer um, actually had one in stock. So I could run down that morning, grabbed it off them, installed it in the afternoon and the next day I was able to head off and have the snorkel ready there to go. Now, that's purely aesthetically wise. I might change the head on it at some point just because it is such a big head, but I don't know if I can actually bother it. It does the job and that's sort of what it's there for. Now, you can also see I have got one of the King's rooftop tents. Um, I'll show you guys what that looks, up, looks like set up and everything else. Um, and I'm pretty happy with that. I, for the cost of rooftop tents and what you actually pay for this one. Um, the mattress could be a little bit thicker, but space-wise, two of us fit in there okay. If you had two people much bigger than myself, I possibly would recommend getting something a little bit wider. But always try and look at the hardcover ones first, just for convenience. The soft cover ones, they can be a bit of, a, bit of an issue putting them up, taking them down and things like that. 
Now, also what you guys would see is um, I've got the aluminium tray obviously instead of the tub on the back. And that's mostly for work purposes and practicality. I just don't really see the value in a tub on a ute unless you're not really using it for a ute sort of purposes as much. Um, so that's added a lot of capacity, carryability and flexibility as well. So the canopy, you can see these two connections on the canopy. And this is actually a lift off canopy as well. So it has got four legs that connect in each one of those. And then it's simply got a cast that you turn and that'll actually lift the whole canopy off the back. All my electrical connections are actually just behind, front, just behind the headboard. And everything that I've added to it, so batteries, water tanks and things like that, I've kept that out, those out of the canopy and actually mounted them under the tray or behind the seats. So that when I do leave the tray behind, the canopy rather, if I leave that behind and I go off on a weekend, I can simply chuck a swag on the back, fridge in the back seat, and I've still got all of my water tank, my power supplies, my inverters, everything else with me. It also gives me the ability to actually be able to take on some slightly tougher tracks if I have to. So I can set that up, pop the tent, have everything set up as a base camp setup, and then I can simply head off with the ute with an empty tray on the back, and I can do some tougher tracks, do some sand dune driving, or trade if I'm taking it on the beach or camping close by or anything like that. It just gives you a lot of versatility and flexibility with that. As I did mention, the battery is a 115 amp AGM battery, which is also just one of the King's ones. Um, I've tried to keep everything price point wise sort of as low as I can afford to try and get it as wide as I can. Um, but that's just on some custom homemade hangers that just sits pretty much in line above the axle. Um, and that just sits underneath the tray there in the back. Now, I have also got a 43 litre water tank and that is from Super Cheap. And that sits right at the back just behind my tail lights and that's just connected up to a small little 12 volt water pump and I've got a little tap on the back there as well so that gives me 40 litres of water supply. Now in future I am actually thinking about adding a second tank. Um, now I decided to partly go with two tanks instead of one large tank because A if I need to save on weight I can do that by simply filling up the one tank instead of both. Now, it also gives me the option of one tank being for drinking water and the other one I can sort of use as a grey water tank. So use that for washing up, showers, anything like that. And that means that using a second pump, I can actually fill that up from the creek or I can fill that up from a petrol station, even just connect to their tap and just pump it full or anything like that. And I don't have to worry too much about it contaminating the tank. I can flush it from time to time, but I've got the separate one that's dedicated for drinking water. All right, just to quickly show you guys what's going on inside here. Now, this is mostly the work sort of storage area. Now, if I'm not working, if we are camping, this is generally where things like baggage, extra bedding, or um, firewood, or anything like that would generally, we store that in this section here. And uh, just a bit of a close look, these are just some latches that I've just made myself as well. And they're just welded up and they just simply clamp the actual canopy down onto the tray itself. And I have also got two bolts that do, um, some high tensile bolts that do bolt the canopy in the back section, but on the front half, that's pretty much, that'll hold it down. They're welded together and everything. All right guys, just quickly having a look at the back of it. Now, um, in the back, this is the water tap that I have here. It's connected to the water pump. Tank, you can actually just about see it sticking out just under here, that's the water tank. I have got a 50 amp Anderson plug on this side and a 120 amp Anderson plug over on this side here. This is also my second GME, that's an FM antenna and that supplies an actual stereo that sits inside the cab itself. Um, 240 volt power outlet that sits just here. Now the reason I have this is I can run a lead either at home or if I have a power campsite, I can run a lead, connect that up to here and that'll power up eight power points that I have inside the ute as well as charge the battery and anything else that I might need as well. Just to give you guys a quick look inside the canopy here. So this is inside the canopy and this is just the inside here. And I've got a drawer system in the center here. Now the drawer is pretty handy, especially because this one does go pretty deep. So I can just lift that latch and the whole drawer comes out. That's great for swags, camp tables, chairs, anything like that that we actually need to stuck, chuck into this section here. So that's a good little just extra storage space for work wise that will store some of my bigger saws and things like that as well. Now you might not be able to see this but I have got some string that I've actually just ran backwards and forwards underneath this lid on this side here. Now the reason for that is if we're camping for any towels, wet clothes or anything like that, that's my washing line. So that just sits there at night time you can just close it up to chuck the clothes back in and so on. I think that's about it for around the back apart from 
This is my second Review camera, and that's connected up to the Review mirror, and that's a dedicated always on camera. Right here, up on the roof here, this is where I am. Um, basically, these are just some, I think, $60 of eBay. I think they look very similar to the Aldi brand of the roof racks there. And they're not too bad, they do the job, but um, they, I do get quite a bit of whistling noise coming off these actually, especially 80Ks and above does really start to make a difference. Next up, um, we've got a good old eBay special. Now that's actually a 250 watt, as far as I remember, uh, 250 watt flat solar panel. And on a good sunny day, I can actually get up to about 13 to 14 amps that's being put out of this. And that's just Velcroed on there. So you can't really see that, but that's got some Velcro straps that I've just sticky taped to the roof and that's... All right, let's see what we've got in the back here. Now, just to start off, we do actually have a standard, that's just the one that comes with the ute, uh, 12 volt cigarette socket there. I have also added in a second one and that runs off the actual auxiliary battery itself as well as a 240 volt plug. And that runs off my 3000 watt inverter, which is just behind here. So if I can get the seat lifted up, let's just have a look. There we go. Now underneath here, this is where most of the power junction points sort of sit at the moment. So what we've got from this is we have actually got the main 12 volt supply that runs off the main battery and then junctions up underneath here. We have got the main 12 volt supply that runs off the auxiliary battery junctions back up over here now they are fused on both ends for anyone who is concerned about that um, from here they do split off and they run into all the units which sit behind the actual seats here now apart from that I have got a small fuse box that just sits underneath here and that fuse box itself will actually supply the power for things like my little Wi-Fi unit it supplies the power for the front two USB points supplies for the actual uh, GME XRS and radio at the front there as well um, as well as one or two other little outlets that I do have hidden away around the place now if we look behind the actual seats so this is where most of the actual units sort of live inside this one so first of all we do have that's my inverter which is the 3000 watt inverter now that's just of eBay as well, that one. It is however a pure sine wave. Um, for those of you who don't know, modified and pure. Modified is, it gives a bit of a shaky um, power signal. Now it will run most things, but it's not very great for things like batteries, microwaves or anything like that. It can do a bit of wear and tear over those. Now pure sine wave one, it's a much more of a moderated sort of power output that it does give you. And that's much more suited to charging things like batteries or running a bit more sensitive equipment. Now over on this side, what we do have here. So I have got the projector 25 amp DC to DC charger, and that's fed from underneath the seat from the main battery. And then that outputs back to the auxiliary battery in the back. Next to that, we've got the SEA 15 amp 240 volt battery charger. Now that's connected to the little power point that sits on the back of the ute there actually. Um, so if I shove a power point on there, this little bad boy fires straight up and that'll charge my auxiliary battery there for me. Now the projector can do with solar input, although I have had some issues with my previous panels and things like that. So I have just got a small little charger that sits here. This is where most of the camping section is sort of set up. So what we have here is simply a king's awning. I believe it's two meters wide, three meters out. Um, and that works great. I've got a little light strip that goes with that as well if I need it. And yeah, it's, hasn't, it, it's not the best one in the sort of windy conditions and everything else. I've had to make a couple of modifications. I'll be putting some clips on it and you might want to add some extra tie, tie down points as well. Now on top of the roof, underneath the rooftop tent is where this little table lives. This little table just slides right in there and that's got two legs that just simply come off them. And just by undoing these ones, I can adjust the height of each leg and that table then connects just up to the top there. Now this one here is the fiance's chopping board, which unfortunately got sacrificed. So that's just once again on a couple of runners. That just sits in the back here and just worked out great. Microwave just in there, a couple of hooks and everything. That's just to hang a couple of utensils off. Tea, coffee, kettle, anything else that lives in there. On the top side, I've got a little pantry. That's got first aid, cooking stuff, pots, pans, whatever else. Some toiletries, extra 
um, coffee and stuff like that. Herbs, spices, cans, anything else we want to keep. Cutlery stays in there as well. Got some of the plastic cutlery that just hangs off there. Now, this is just simply a King's uh, 65 litre fridge freezer. So far, it's doing pretty well. It does exactly what it's supposed to. Uh, drop down fridge slide, normally they are an absolute fortune. So I've just cheaped out and literally made my own one. Um, it's not the prettiest of things going, but it definitely does do the job. Up on the roof here, you can just about see that. That's just um, kitchen knife that just lives up here. So just nice and convenient for where it is. And then I've just got some paper towel just on a bungee cord and that just lives up there and just connects right on. On the left hand side, just above the fridge, we have got a second radio that lives just up there. You might be able to just see it. Um, that's just a second FM antenna that just runs all the way up the side of the canopy here. And don't forget the bottle opener. Um, now that radio just runs to a set of six by nine speakers that just live in the back there. So that's great, you pull into camp, just turn the radio on, you got music instantly. Um, Anderson plug, that just simply runs the fridge. Got a couple of uh, fuse blocks there, and uh, that just runs anything else. There's 12 volts in the back here, lights and stuff like that. While I'm on the lights, i uh, got a light switch here, and that just runs a light strip all the way along, and then back up that side and back down the other side. Now that'll not only light up this sort of kitchen area, it does spread a good three, four meters out from camp as well and even further than that if we could just walk it around. Um, I've got a 12 volt cigarette socket as well as a battery monitor sitting in the back here and then a Google Home as well, just cause I do actually have Wi-Fi on the Ute, so that's great for that. Um, and then yeah, a couple of pots, pans, spices, stuff like that all tuck up in the side there. All right guys, uh, just quickly, something has actually come to my attention since I originally filmed the review video for this rooftop tent. Now that is, I did notice a small crack that is running on the top corner on the front side of the actual hard cover of this tent. Now I didn't bug me too much at first, I kind of thought I'd fix it or get someone else to, but I did do a bit of bit more digging and um, yeah apparently it's not an isolated incident actually. So I have found a couple of resources of people mentioning that they've had the cracking issue as well. Um, one person in particular he has actually returned the tent. Um, due to the cracking, got told it was sort of a bad batch according to him, got a new tent and apparently that one has also cracked on him as well. So apparently Kings have been pretty good, they've just given him a good clean refund for that one. Now I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do yet, uh, price point wise it's probably still the most I want to spend right now for that sort of thing. Eventually I will upgrade that to something a bit better. But yeah, I just thought I'd drop that in there quickly just as part of the review for that tent. I will do a more in-depth one at some other point, but just thought I'd give you guys a bit of that heads up there. Right, for those of you who are interested in potentially one of these rooftop tents, I uh, just thought I'd give you a quick look just what these ones have inside them. So, first of all, um, they're actually much bigger than what you might think. Width-wise, uh, two of us fit in here fairly okay, actually. It's not as wide as the Double Deluxe um, swags, if you guys are familiar with those, but it's pretty damn close. Um, so what I've added is, that's just a little battery pack, 12, uh, little light strip that just sits across the top there. Now that's actually handy, it has actually got a little motion sensor on it. So once you sense to set that up, you just switch it over to the motion one and as soon as you get in, the light turns on. It gives you a good amount of light at night time actually. You have got a window on the, one, the feed end, you've got a similar window just at the head end, and then same as my entry window, you've got another one on that side as well. So you've got four windows in summertime that you can open up. Now I have also added a small bracket, which just sits just up there. And same for the other side as well. Now the reason for those is uh, we've just got some 12 volt fans. So in summertime, if it gets a bit warm in here, you can just clamp a fan onto that, hook it, use a hanger or something like that as well. And then that'll give you a bit of a breeze and it does actually make quite a nice big difference. On top of that, we have got a little two USB plug up there. That's just for charging mobile phones and everything. Um, I have also got a cigarette socket and an Anderson plug. Generally, if I get anything electrical, I just cut the plug off and put an Anderson on that. And that just drops straight down to the back of the tray. That cord there goes out the top, drops down to the back of the tray, plugs in there, and that's connected to the auxiliary battery. Bedding and stuff, we keep all that stuff in here normally. Two pillows, sometimes two dunas, and I have actually got a memory foam mattress on top of the standard mattress. 
as we did find it a little bit on this inside. Got a couple of storage pockets here, just two of those, so it's just handy for chucking your phones in and stuff like that. Put them on charge, chuck them in, job done. And that's about it for inside here. There's not much to them, but it definitely, it does the job. It works pretty well, it sets up really quickly. It's pretty comfortable. In winter time, it's actually not too bad. Two people can definitely warm this thing up quite nicely. And in the summertime, yeah, with the fan and all the windows open, actually, it, it runs pretty well, hey? Okay, guys, that's me pretty much done for the pack up today. Um, just got the fridge to put away, maybe one or two other things. So hopefully that's helped you guys a little bit with just some of the ideas and directions that you might want to go in. Feel free to let me know any comments or suggestions that you guys might have, even for my setup. There's something I might change or could improve on. Um, if you have any questions as well, hit me up with those ones. So, yeah, for me, this is the sort of setup that I would prefer. Um, I do struggle a little bit with the weight restrictions and stuff because there's a few more things I want to add. Uh, mostly mechanical, I want to add some fuel filters, catch cans, stuff like that, but I really start thinking about where I want to invest that extra weight now. Um, but yeah, this is pretty much what we actually wanted when we originally started with the setup because it's something that we can pull into camp even if it's late at night. This, this take literally, we can set it up. I did it myself today, for instance, for that video, that took me three and a half minutes. Now, if one of us takes the tent, the other one takes the awning, both of us get our chairs out, we're done in about two minutes flat. Pack up takes a little bit longer, but I mean, you're looking at like, what, six, seven minutes. Pack the awning away, one of us does that, the other one does the tent, and we're back out of there again. We've got water, we've got power, we've got lighting, we've got everything we need with that setup there ready to go. And for me, one of the best things is, it's got four legs on the canopy. I put those legs in, I can simply drive off, I can take on some really tough tracks, I can do some bit, bit more sand dunes and stuff like that. And the ute's got everything that I do need for those sort of trips. Yeah, so let me know what you guys think, any other suggestions or whatever, and hopefully you enjoyed it. Thank you.